Hello Adult Sunday School Leader. As you can tell, this video is a little later than usual. Uh, our team, our mission team, returned from Washington State late Tuesday night, and well, actually, it was early Wednesday morning. So I've, and then you know how Wednesdays are at church. I've, so I've been frantically trying to get caught up with everything. So thank you very much for your patience. Well, this week we're continuing in the unit called James, Living Out Your Faith. This is the fourth lesson called Faith on Display in Your Conversations. And the scriptures out of James chapter 3. The point of this lesson is, when you rely on God, your words reflect his character. Proverbs 18.21 says that the tongue has the power of life and death. Have you ever found that to be true? Have you ever said something that, that really hurts someone to the core? And, and you might not even have meant anything by it. You know, that happened to me, to me on my first mission trip to Brazil in 1992. I had an interpreter. Her name was Nayla. And uh, Nayla was uh, of Japanese descent, but she was uh, Brazilian and a very sensitive young lady. And we were sitting at this restaurant. It was a pizzeria restaurant, and it was overlooking the Amazon River, open air restaurant. And uh, she said something funny, and me, with my wonderful sense of humor, said, Oh, shut up, Nayla. And she got quiet, and she didn't speak to me. And the next day, I said, Nayla, what is wrong? She says, not even my father has ever told me to shut up. Well, I had to explain to her how we Americans, with our loose tongues, say things like that, and we don't really mean them. And she finally got, you know, when you have an interpreter in a country where you can't speak the language and they're not speaking to you, that's a problem. So anyway, we got that settled. But anyway, that can happen. That can happen to us, can't it? Well, our first set of verses this week is in James chapter 3, verses 1, uh, through the first part of verse 5. And it begins with this section on controlling our speech. Well, actually, James has already addressed this topic back in chapter 1, verse 26, when he wrote, Those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and the religion is worthless. Well, in our section here this week, James starts off by stating something there in verse 1 that affects me. And it affects most of you who are watching this video. And he said, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know we who teach will be judged more strictly. Well, this is a statement we shouldn't take lightly. Now, be assured here, James is not talking about judgment as it's concerned with salvation, but with rewards. When a believer accepts a te teaching position to, to have their own little kingdom, or uh, they do so to, to get a title that I'm a teacher in the church, or, or they lead, in their teaching, lead others astray in their teaching, those motives and their actions will be seen for what they are, and they're going to be judged, and the only reward they're going to get is that pat on the back that they received while on earth. No eternal reward. Jesus kind of addressed this issue back in Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, when he talked about giving to the needy with the wrong motives. And when he said these words, when he said, uh, So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Meaning, the little bit of praise they got there on earth, that was the only reward they were getting. Well, back in James... Uh, verse 2 of our text, we're told that we all stumble in many ways. We may have seen the meme or the bumper sticker that says, Don't judge me because I sin differently than you. Well, while that's true, I've seen that phrase used as an excuse for a person's sin who won't even attempt to change. All right, so, so one of the many ways people stumble is in their speech. And I'm not necessarily talking about cursing, but there are other ways that we dishonor God and our faith in our speech. Withholding the whole truth, just outright lying, belittling others, gossiping, spreading rumors. You might can name, think of some others, right? Well, if you control your tongue, then you will be most likely able to have self-control over other temptations as well, which is what verse 2 is telling us. And why is that? Because the taming of the tongue is impossible humanly speaking. Now, I don't know why verse 8 isn't in our lesson text this week, but it, it really should be. It says that no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. 
Keep that in mind. No human being can tame the tongue. Well, in verses 3 and 4, James gives two examples to illustrate how such a small organ like the tongue can do great things, either for good or for bad. And he uses the example of bits in a horse's mouth to control that animal, so much larger than a human. He also states that a, a small rudder whose position is controlled by the captain of a ship, it can determine the course of a, of a huge vessel. And, and just like the, the rudder of a ship is under the control of the captain, your tongue is under your control. So saying that, I just couldn't help saying something, is not an excuse. Yes, you can help it. You do have control over your tongue. Now we skip down to verses 9 and 10, and, and I realize that there are so many verses that, that one can cover to do a lesson justice during the Sunday school hour, but I'm not sure, here again, why verses 11 and 12 were omitted because they illustrate the truth in verses 9 and 10 so well. Just like a spring cannot produce both salt water and fresh water, our tongue should not sing the Lord's praises and then curse a fellow human being who is made in the image of God the God we are praising. But that's exactly what we do so many times, isn't it? We curse, gossip, talk bad about someone, and then turn around and praise God and thank Him and sing songs with that same mouth. Let me ask you this. If there were a 50-50 chance that when you turned on your faucet at home, you might get pure water or maybe some tainted water that that might uh, make you sick or even worse, would you drink from that tap with confidence? No, you would be suspect of every drop of water that came through that faucet. Likewise, if you gossip and praise God, if you gossip about people behind their back yet compliment them to their face, those who see you do that, they're, they're going to be suspect of everything you say. Being two-faced in your speech affects both your relationship with God as well as with others. It's a lose-lose situation. Your words do not reflect the character of God when you do that. And, of course, the character of God is truth. Well, our last set of verses is verses 13 through 18. Now, back in chapter 1, verse 5, James said that if you lack wisdom, to ask God, and he will generously give it. He also wrote in the last half of chapter 2 that claiming to have faith without works is dead. Now, James is going to take those two issues and combine those into one thought here. He says, who is wise among you? He writes in verse 13, let them show it by their good life and by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. True, true wisdom comes from God, doesn't it? This is the wisdom that's, that's needed to bridle one's tongue because it isn't humanly possible, as verse told us. Verse 2 told us, if you have this heavenly wisdom, then your actions are going to show it. Not just in the things that you do, but in the things that you say, or probably more importantly, that you don't say. But there's this false wisdom that exists as well, and it's in sharp contrast with heavenly wisdom. Let's call it earthly wisdom. In verse 15 of the New International Version, the words wisdom is in quotation marks, meaning supposed wisdom. So this earthly wisdom, this supposed wisdom, is the opposite of heavenly wisdom. It's evidenced by bitterness, envy, and selfish ambition. And the result is disorder and evil. In fact, in verse 15, James pulls no punches. He, he doesn't sugarcoat the situation at all. He calls this attitude not only earthly, but unspiritual and demonic. Then he contrasts this with heavenly wisdom that is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial, and, and sincere. And the contrast is very similar, isn't it, to Paul's contrast of the acts of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 19 through 23, which say this, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness and orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So let's take the advice, or actually the command, of Paul in the next 
verses in Galatians 5, verses 24 through 25, when he says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So since we belong to Christ, let's crucify the desire to use our speech for negativity, to cut others down, for gossip, all these things. It's not only hurtful, it's not only a bad witness, but it's downright demonic. So let's keep in step with the Spirit who will guide us, who will, who will give us wisdom and convict us when we do stumble. Now, if you want some other verses that support this, this theme of, of the tongue and speech, uh, we could look at 1 Peter 3, verse 10. We could look at James uh, chapter 1, verse 26 that we've already talked about. And Proverbs 15, uh, verse 4. Next week, we're going to be looking at the first 10 verses in James 4 as we examine the topic of, of faith being on display when we're facing the enemy. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate you. Don't forget, pray for and with your class.